very much uh, to all of you for this first talk, uh, part of a, a focus talk series happening this week. Um, so we had a first meeting with some curators and institutions directors today morning. And um, right now, so we are um, starting a talk on Manifesta 13. Um, so we have more uh, people coming in, I can see that. Um, and so Manifesta 13 was founded by art historian Edvig Fission uh, here, and uh, it is divided into three different yet connected programs uh, that have been created over the past two years. Uh, there is the central program, Très d'Union, uh, and Alia Septi, uh, one of the three curators, will be here talking about that. Uh, we also have the education and mediation program, Le Tiers Program, uh, so with Primavera Gomez Caldes talking about that, and also the collateral projects and events, uh, Parallel du Sud, with more than 80 projects uh, in the region south. <coughs> So, and um, I will invite uh, Beatrice uh, Simonet uh, to say a word about that. But um, first of all, so I would like to thank you all um, for being here. Um, I will, um, we will start um, with uh, Jean-Christophe Arcos, uh, who is a coordinator of PAC Network. Um, PAC Network is a network or, uh, of contemporary venues in the region uh, south of Provence, of Provence Art Contemporain. Uh, he, he will say a few words um, on the situation of the art scene uh, in Marseille and the south region. So I pass you on the word, um, Jean-Christophe. Yeah, can I, you can, me? I, I can hear you from afar, but I can hear you. So okay. I don't, you're I don't from Marseille, know. I'm talking from Marseille. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, um, hi everyone. Very pleased and quite impressed, I must say, to 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 meet you almost in person. Um, how would I say? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Manifesta, uh, of course, and and the Institut Français, of course, to organize this meeting, and Manifesta for choosing Marseille for having chosen Marseille. Uh, because I think it was very, uh, uh, maybe accurate, very relevant to organize this um, change for Manifesta, because I understood there was a, quite a change in Manifesta this year on the occasion of uh, Manifesta 13, uh, because Manifesta is trying, I, I think, uh, what I imagined, what I understood, to involve, to, to show how artists, art, can be involved in the change of a city, of a whole uh, environment, of a context. And I think Marseille was a very clever choice um, because Marseille is a very tough city. Lots of things need to be done and changed in Marseille. Maybe you read the news uh, from some weeks ago that uh, we had a political change uh, due to the uh, city elections and um, showing that there, the city needs a huge shift uh, because it's a tough city. It's, a, it's very, uh, the social context is very hard. It's very difficult. There are many um, poor people living in the city, many abandoned buildings, uh, many also abandoned populations, categories of populations. And I think it's uh, maybe the, 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 the fact that Manifesta uh, took charge of this context, understood this context, read this context, context uh, was also very important and was also a very uh, huge symbol for the local scene. Uh, as you may know, there is also a manifesta effect. Uh, I was, um, as Mathilde Rubinstein and Beatrice Simonet will mention that better than I will, certainly. But um, according to statistics, there are many more artists coming to a city uh, during the two years before preceding Manifesta or such an event. So um, there, there were already many artists in Marseille. 
um, all, almost, I would say, if you, according to the numbers of the statistics in France, of the Maison des Artistes, uh, we have 6,000 artists living in Marseille and active in Marseille. Uh, but now maybe there are even more, thanks to Manifesta. And um, what is quite specific to Marseille is, uh, of course, that's the, um, the sole Greek city in France, uh, the sole city funded by Greeks uh, during the antiquity. And uh, otherwise, um, whereas all the cities in France were funded by Romans. And I think there is a specific spirit in this city. And also a specific way to um, move within the city. Uh, because the city is quite huge, actually, very large, it's very vast, and it's also very difficult to move from one point to another. And these created, in a way, um, some uh, isolation of populations. The, uh, the, you know, the northern districts, which are quite far from the city center, and uh, this is some, in a way, some archipelago, like islands of an archipelago um, being for which it's difficult to communicate. And of course, the artists living and uh, working here in Marseille uh, are facing this reality uh, in their everyday life. And also they translate it in their uh, work. Um, what appeared during conversations with journalists during the first um, press tour of Manifesta and back uh, was exactly that, that here uh, the, the artists from Marseille addressed the social issues, but like very literally, very um, clearly. Uh, it's, it's not political correctness, it's not uh, um, so-called political artists, they are really involved and entangled within these social issues that people here are facing day to day in their day to day life. Um, and that's also very important to um, uh, underline that Manifesta had this, I guess, that the curators had this in mind, especially I, I was yesterday in the, in the school plot uh, in the conservatoire, and it was really clear uh, that the, the the whole exhibition uh, of the the whole exhibition uh, part of manifesta uh, is about the notion of control, and it's quite clear that um, the the how to say that the the separation of territories uh, is was part here of this of a control situation, and of course it's very in interesting to imagine that the city is very mixed uh, with people coming from different origins, from different countries, from different tongues, and still they can mix because of, uh, I guess, culture and art, even though it's very difficult to move from one district to another. And there is a common language, there are common symbols that uh, appear clearly. Of course, football players, of course, the monument that we call Notre Dame de la Garde, which is the uh, basilica um, uh, topping the city, but, and of course, also the sea and so on, the, the sea, the sun and so on. Okay, the, the postcard is here. But uh, I think that culture, this um, mixed culture, this culture of underground, this underground culture, I would say, is also very important here uh, as a, um, um, it's not only a spice, it's also a way to communicate from one community to another. And I think that uh, that was particularly understood uh, by the Manifesta curatorial team. Once that is said, um, it's also very um, important to underline that uh, Marseille is a way of a cul-de-sac. Um, you can't go farther than Marseille. And it's also difficult for artists living here and working here to go farther than Marseille. Uh, so this is why I would like 
very deeply to thank uh, Adeline to organize this kind of meeting. And I know that uh, she proposed, she, she asked me also to, um, to gather some PDF files uh, dealing, dealing or showing some works by artists of the local scene because it's very difficult to, to, for this artist to meet um, foreigners, to meet uh, uh, professionals abroad. Uh, usually they stay here, they try, to, they, they try to improve their work, they try to meet other people, but they are always la labeled as local artists. And that's why also this kind of meeting is very important to show that here there is a specific, um, a specificity of the scene, uh, a double specificity, as I said, and um, also uh, that to help artists to move farther than Marseille. And I know that Manifesta took that uh, also very seriously. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Jean-Christophe, for this uh, interesting introduction on the art scene in Marseille that gives us a bit better overview. And uh, as you mentioned, yes, we wanted to um, kind of um, for our guests to go deeper into uh, different artists from the local scene to be able to, uh, I mean, we've asked um, uh, venues in Marseille to uh, choose two artists of their choice and to, um, to present them on portfolios, on files that we will uh, uh, that will be available for you on our website and so going um, back to yeah um, manifesta and its context and the art scene um, I want to give the word to Alia Septi so one of the um, the three curators of the section Très d'Union um, the exhibition uh, section and which is one of the the three uh, bigger sections uh, uh, within manifesta um, Alia, um, I wanted to first, before you start your presentation of Très d'Union and how you work together with, uh, uh, with uh, the two other curators who are uh, Katerina Trucalina from VAC uh, Venice and Moscow, VAC Foundation, uh, and also together with Stefan Kalmar, uh, who is the the director of um, ICA uh, in London, Institute for Contemporary Art. Um, I wanted to first maybe ask you um, how you, you worked um, together with the, the Marseille art scene. Uh, how was your approach um, uh, as a curator for uh, Manifesta? And how did you work also together with, uh, uh, with the two other curators on that? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your invitation. And I'm extremely pleased and honored to be part of this uh, conversation. Um, and, uh, and thank you so much, uh, Jean-Christophe Arconso, so for this presentation, which also gives me very interesting links to, um, yeah, to, to talk about and to develop a little bit more. I just wanted to check, like, technique-wise, if you can hear me well. Yes. Yes. OK, super. <laughs> Um, and um, actually, because we don't, we won't have like a lot of time, I, I start to, what I would like to do is, yes, on the one hand, to specifically address like this question of the, the methodology and how we tried uh, to ground the, the, the biennial in, uh, in Marseille, how we worked together. Um, and having definitely this focus on uh, on artists, uh, French artists. Um, so don't hesitate at any point to like ask questions. And I know that later on there will be like a moment for uh, for the questions. Um, but to answer your question of like how, so it's one question in two questions, right? The first one yeah. is like how we worked together. Yeah. And the second one is, is how we worked with local artists in, in Marseille. So how we work together, chronologically, how we started, we all got invited to, uh, to work on this edition of, uh, of Manifesta. Uh, we didn't know each other. Uh, so we, we all have been uh, appointed uh, separately. Um, and, uh, and then we met um, and uh, we, we've been, um, the year we started um, in November, uh, no, we, in September 
2018 um, and we had like a first meeting, all of us together, we were four uh, curator during this type of the moment of elaboration of the concept, everything for a year. Uh, we met uh, in Marseille, I think like end of November, 2018. And November 2018 is a very important date that uh, has influenced a lot, uh, has influenced us a lot because um, in November, the early in uh, that month, it was uh, the moment of the collapse of the, of the buildings in Marseille. Uh, and a few weeks after that, that's when we were gathered together in Marseille to, to experience uh, a place where, uh, and that's one of the specificity of, of Manifesta, where none of us had worked previously. Uh, some of us had already been in Marseille, um, but none of us had like um, a prof profession in Marseille. So like immediately the question of like, how, how, do, we, how do we work in, uh, in a city that is complex? Uh, how do we apprehend, try to have a better understanding um, and in this very, very uh, strong and shaking moment of, of the collapse of the building. So as Jean-Christophe was saying, this moment of, it um, kind of symbolized also the feeling of isolation of the population, of some communities that were completely left on the side. And all of us, uh, and, uh, and that's also one of the, the, the beautiful thing about the manifesto, it's, it's a biannual uh, which addresses and gives us the possibility to address uh, social changes within like happening in, in the city. Um, so like the clear question was like, how, how do we ground ourselves in a city that we don't understand yet? Um, and like, there were different things like structurally uh, yes, the four of us were, had never worked before in Marseille, though some of us had already been in Marseille, but the whole team of Manifesta, the curatorial team with the curatorial assistant, the production team, they moved to Marseille two years before. Uh, some programs started, and you will see that more in detail, but Le Tiers program started its first exhibition one year before. Uh, and for every people who uh, were hired specifically for this edition of Manifesta, the vast majority was already like working in Marseille. So we had like team wise, uh, a, a deeper like grounding in the city. That's one of the, the like, let's say starting element. Um, and then uh, it, it was like, um, constantly meeting with people like from very different backgrounds from association, activist, uh, independent cultural initiative, institution, and like this ongoing conversation of, of like trying to understand uh, and, and then like with the hope of working closely together leading up to the biennial. Um, one of the example I think um, is, um, that was then concrete, that became concrete during the moment of the biennial is the work with the Association Noy Debout. Um, Noy Debout is, uh, yes, this association that was also connected to the collapse of the building of the 5th of November, 2018, and then who uh, made this project with Le Tiers Programme, with the Invisible Archive of the Tiers Programme to, um, select like an object of the everyday that was connected to the collapse of the building. This object has been uh, given to the Musée d'Histoire de la Ville de Marseille. And then it has been showed in uh, the Musée Gros Bel Abadie, uh, connected to the first plot. I know it sounds very much like uh, keywords. Don't worry, I'm going to develop all of that. But I think like really this, this example of working closely with the local association like Noy Debout and how it has become like a concrete part in the, in the exhibition that, that we will see later on um, at the Musée Grobel Albadje gives um, a good example. Uh, what else can I say about this methodology and how we grounded? Um, yeah, like first like rounding the understanding. Um, the second part is, um, 
how um, yeah th there is like of course like like most of the biennial you have on the one hand this international expectation and the local expectation and how you create like a bridge between both and mm -hmm. uh, the, when we started uh, and there was like the, the the strong will to work with uh, with artists who are based um, in Marseille uh, and that's what we did like through the exhibition and the public program um, and I will develop later on the part of the of the public program so it's grounding the understanding working with local initiative and association working with local artists um, working with local institution so there was like from the beginning on the the choice of working closely in spaces that are existing ex institution so there is um, for instance le musée cantini uh, you would have uh, le musée des beaux-arts le musée d'histoire naturelle le musée d'histoire de la ville de marseille so several cultural institution where we decided to work inside this institution um, and um, voila mm -hmm. another element one of the key elements, of course, when we're talking about the grounding is like, who are we addressing? Are we only focused on um, an international audience or beyond just saying we work with the local audience, what are the, what are the methodology? How do we work with this local audience? How do we approach the local audience? Um, of course, like one of the main thing language wise, uh, it's clear. Uh, but also like the fact that we thought this whole biennial in terms of chapters of plots, which we could then also open one moment after the other one. It also means that we didn't have this idea of, you know, opening the biennial for three days, focusing on a whole uh, international audience. And then it's like a petard mouillé and nothing happens. On the contrary, we wanted to work on this continuity um, another element uh, is, um, is this, this connection, um, at least for me, because I was also part of the, of the jury of Les, Les Parallèles du Sud, uh, and like where from the beginning, where the jury took place to, uh, yeah, to, to be able to follow projects and to be part of the selection of projects that, uh, that are happening internationally, locally, with local regional association. And that, of course, Be Beatrice will develop much more uh, this, this part of it. But like also this, this idea of c'est une continuité. It, it happened, there were many things happened before. There was this momentum uh, or this window of time of the biennial and things that will happen after, which kind of, um, yeah, like helped us to give a sense of methodology for uh, like how we grounded locally the, the biennial. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you, Alia. And I forgot to uh, mention actually that you are based in Berlin and you are a director of IFA Gallery there. And um, yeah, can we go further with uh, your presentation so that we can have a look um, yes. at Très d'Union, which is the, the part uh, dedicated yes. to the exhibitions uh, you curated together with uh, Stefan Kalmar and um, Katerina Cucellina. Let me try to share the screen. I don't <laughs> have a promise. Let's see. Attends. The green taste, uh, the green button, share screen. One second. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay. Yeah. Is it okay. working? Yes? Yeah. Okay. And do you have it in diaporama like this or not? It's not full screen, but um, um, I suppose if you click on the play up yeah. there. Well, no, I am, yeah, I have it on the... Up there, actually. Voilà, c'est bon. Magnifique. It's a miracle. First time it happens. <laughs> I'm using Congrats. We should celebrate this moment. Um, so I will focus on this, uh, on the exhibition and its uh, public program that we, we called the Chitre d'Union. Um, 
well, first of all, why Très d'Union uh, and why we have put, we have added S uh, even when there were none. Um, is we wanted like Très d'Union, like that translates as a, as a hyphen. Um, a biennial itself, like as this hyphen or creating bridges uh, between different cultures, but also like we kind of addressed it in three levels. So the first one, um, you would have like the Très d'Union, like geographically, because of the geographical situation of Marseille, um, being like in the southern shore of, of Europe and this place of also connection between yeah, the Europe and Africa, North Africa. Um, and but also like this this enclave. So this question of the trade union or trade de désunion was uh, was very was still very present geographically. Um, as also within Marseille, exactly as Jean Christophe was was highlighting this point of this when he was talking about, I like very much this idea of the archipelago or this this islands and this kind of places where the difficulties of communicating from one community to another. Um, Très d'Union like, was also like an attempt to uh, highlight spaces, already existing spaces um, of like connecting several communities together within the city of, uh, of Marseille. Uh, and on an individual level, uh, we, when we talked about like Très d'Union is, uh, is a kind of more like an answer to the concept of uh, hybridity, um, hybrid identities uh, that, that has been very present in um, like contemporary art nowadays when you have like, um, yeah, this, this idea of Très d'Union is like bringing together several individual trajectories or like several histories of one person um, without trying to melt them into one. So really like by keeping les écarts différentiels or the, the, the differences um, and all of these elements, like it brings two elements together without like erasing the differences and without like completely merging them. And that's what we, what we try to address with the, with the concept or the title of, uh, of Très d'Union. So it's mostly like on this three level, individual level, uh, societal or communities level and the geographical level. Mm -hmm. And um, so what we also have been doing is making it in six, um, Yes, chapitre actually. So it's these six plots um, are very much connected, and we will go more in detail into into the the plots. But um, as I said at the beginning, we arrived at this moment where there was the collapse of the building. So there was like this sense of urgency to address like the first plot to to talk about the home, uh, and um, and then the, with the last one being the school. Um, and if we have a little bit more time, I can develop later on, like why we wanted to open up with the, with the school, but let's go like a plot par plot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the different chapters, huh? Your, yes, your yes. Lesson. The six uh, chaps, chapters. The six chapters that we opened one after the other one. So we started with the first one um, end of uh, August, on the 28th of August, and the last one just opened on the 9th of October. Mm -hmm. So here you have um, with this with this map. It's like to give you an idea of the the spread of the the different spaces where the the exhibition uh, took place. And with the first plot, you all the time have with one plot, one main venue and satellite spaces. So we we started with the with the one of the of the house. And the question of housing, um, being entitled or not of having a house, and uh, and looking into like what does it mean to have like this house, this private space, or or not, and to imagine the yeah the idea of um, of un chez soi, of having its own house, and uh, this took place in um, like as the main venue, the Musée Grobel Abadie. 
And this is like um, a very uh, bourgeois house um, and uh, which kind of defined at its time its notion of housing. And we wanted to challenge a little bit that and to like open up a little bit the narrative around that. So you have um, all the time at the end of the presentation, uh, the name of the participants who have been working in that specific venue uh, and its satellites. And whenever you have like a little star is to give an idea that um, it's when it's, you have like um, a commission work. Mm -hmm. And within that, I was giving you the example of Noir Debout who showed like this association who showed the work, uh, the piece that they selected uh, after the collapse uh, of, the, of the buildings uh, and that they showed within the Musée Grobel Abadier. And how many commissions um, did you have in, in the... All together? Yeah, all together. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, I think we had like more than 80% of the commissions. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not wrong, but I, I can't give you like the exact number because like we worked and you will see that in the next plot, but with some of them, we worked with a lot of historical pieces as well. Mm -hmm. But we tried to have as many uh, commissions at, as possible and that even more when we have been dealing with the pandemic also that also like it raised the question of like you know bringing a lot of work and all of that and there we also tried uh, to to have as many commission work as possible to have let's say a more um, yeah organic and uh, consume less consuming um, uh, approach of a biennial, so with less existing shipping work and all of that, and to have more commissioned pieces. Mm -hmm. So let's go further, yeah? So that, yes. <laughs> yes, super. So there are some examples of artists, but we, we, we can look at it later on. I will move from one plot to the other one, and then we can see the specifics of their questions, okay? Yeah. Super. The second plot, Le Refuge, um, is uh, happened mostly in uh, Le Musée uh, Cantigny uh, with um, as main participants um, was Marka Vishamovic where we wanted to reproduce thanks to uh, an intervention of Marka Vishamovic this, this, this moment of uh, passage um, that uh, Varian Frey enabled um, but also, uh, and for those of you who can visit the, the Musée Cantigny, what happened then when the Villa Herbel disappeared? If it's just like keywords, please stop me and I will go more into the detail, but I know we have little time, so. Uh, no, let's go. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. And here also, that's where you see all the historical works we have been uh, looking at. And that's where my colleague, Katerina Trushalina has been doing this amazing research um, yeah, with, with several participants, with uh, bringing together historical works as well. The third chapter, the one of the, the Alm House, is um, the, the place of uh, Vieille Charité. It has been like many things, but amongst other, uh, it has been like a a hospital, it has been a, a, an, an almhouse, it has been like a place for people who were considered as um, mentally disabled. It has been, um, now it's a, several museum. So this place was really interesting to, to work about, like to, to ask the question of the norm uh, and uh, to ask, yes, this norm, modernity, um, how people are being isolated uh, from a community and uh, and that's in that uh, space also you have a lot of um, historical works um, as well as um, new uh, new commission and amongst other I think that's where we have some images of it is the works of uh, of Anna Bogiguillon what mm -hmm. the next plot um, is uh, it's called like at the, à la croisée des histoires. Um, 
so we went to, and there are not so many uh, city history museum. And here, like it's the, the Musée d'Histoire de la Ville de Marseille. And you have to imagine that this, this space is very close to a centre commercial. Uh, actually, to have, you have to go through the centre commercial to go through the entrance of that space. And um, yeah, it asks the, the question of like consumerism, different historical layers, uh, which stories are told, uh, which is like the main narrative. And here we worked with three artists, Yassine Balbziwi, Samia Eni, and Sarah Ouhadou to actually challenge um, yeah, the, the, the main or the single history that is being told and bring contemporary site-specific intervention. You will see one more in detail tomorrow with the talk with Sarah, it will be much more clear how we try to challenge the main history avec, with the H majuscule. Here you have some images of Sarah, but we will see that tomorrow. We have plenty of time for that. Mm -hmm. Samia, Yassine. The next plot, uh, Le Parc. And you, you can see here on this, on this image, you have two museums facing each other. So you have Le Musée d'Histoire and Le Musée des Beaux-Arts, Le Musée d'Histoire Naturelle and Le Musée des Beaux-Arts. Um, and with that, we try to address like this living together uh, of human, non-human, this kind of decolonial ecology, uh, to use very fancy uh, keywords uh, right now. Uh, but you, like, it's very, very clear when you look at the work of uh, Minya Biabani, Ali Sheri, uh, you have also the work of Mathieu Abonek, but I know that you will have, like, in the, in the replay that is available for, uh, for all the participants, you will have, like, a portfolio of their work. Um, but you can see that, uh, yeah, you can see that more, more in detail. But we tried also to infuse here different stories within the cultural institution, uh, different way of showing works, uh, like it's very clear here with the work of Ali Sheri or with Minya's um, piece. The last plot um, is uh, L'Ecole and uh, took place mostly in the Conservatoire. And there, it's asking this question of, uh, you know, with the conservatoire, you have this idea of like this singular person versus and work or uh, the, the collective. Um, and there you have uh, the installation of uh, Mohamed Bourouissa, Julien Creuset, Mounir Ayash, um, who uh, most of them have been working very specifically on that, uh, on that space and to, I will, and with just the example of the latest performance that we had there on the 9th and 10th of, uh, of October. And uh, it's the performance of, uh, of Imen Fakir. Um, and um, with the starting point actually, talking about islands, uh, and uh, it was talking about like following the stories from uh, several people from the Banlieue Nord de Marseille um, and how she created a whole performance uh, and stories about uh, islands in the in the conservatoire and last i finished with an advertising iman fakir has um uh, séance d'écoute this afternoon with radio grenouille so you would have all the podcasts available and that's what brings actually to um the public program this public program what we try to do is uh, to have like how to diffuse outside of the space of the exhibition. So the, the radiophonic and the sonic dimension has been extremely present. And we have uh, a partnership with Radio Grenouille through several séances d'écoute, the last one happening today with, uh, with uh, Imen Fakir. So with artists who have been participating in uh, the exhibition, but also with artists who have not been participating to the exhibition. So for instance, with the Collectif Deleterre, based in Marseille, with the sound curator Elena Bizerna also based in Marseille. And all of these are always available online. So you can find them on the website of, uh, of Manifesta and Radio Grenouille. Another part of the public program has been these encounters on two main focus. The first one talking about restitution um, and how we're dealing with uh, restitution or how artists actually open up this imaginaire around the question of restitution nowadays. Um, and that's also is available on the, on the website. You have all the documentation available online. 
and another one uh, with the Mediterranean encounter, and that has been in partnership with Limera, where we have been working with a lot of artists who are based in Marseille, um, like for instance, Marie Beauvau or Franck Pourcel, asking them like, what is their uh, work with Mediterranean Très d'Union or Très de Désunion. And all of that also is, you can find every presentation and conversation uh, online. And the last part of the of the public program has been this ongoing film program with the with the video drone. Great. So yeah, thank you very much, Alia. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting to yeah to to have these different chapters to understand how you worked uh, also uh, with local initiatives, uh, local. Um, uh, artists and institutions. And um, I will uh, pass on the word uh, to Edvig Fijen because Alia, you have to leave us uh, briefly and come back to us for the questions and answers. Yes. <laughs> um, so Edvig, I don't know if you are, you, if you can hear us. I can't see you yet. Um, Hi, I'm there. Yeah, here you are. Yeah, because we started with Alia because she had to leave us. But uh, it's very, I mean, important and interesting for us to know um, how um, how it worked. I mean, how you worked as manifesta. As a, did you work the same way with Palermo, uh, working together with architects and, and doing a study uh, beforehand? I mean, before manifesta started, it's quite a long um, a long term uh, work. Yeah? That's started quite a while ago and that would be very interesting to to understand um, how how it works thank you Adeline thank you uh, Alia also thanks for inviting Manifesta I see two of my former colleagues Maria Lavaiva from Manifesta 3 curator <laughs> and Yara Bubnova from Manifesta 4 also welcome and nice to see you back uh, indeed, Manifesta, I think uh, there are two issues which are super important and also to understand the, um, the change of, let's say, how Manifesta is different than any other biennial. First, we have a long-term process in which we work, and some of these processes are rather invisible. So, in already, as you know, that Manifesta is not focusing on contemporary art anymore. It's already in... Manifesta 11, we focused on uh, architecture in a collaboration with the ETH, but also in Manifesta 12, we worked with OMA, published Palermo Atlas, a kind of a foundational, we call it pre-biennial urban research in order to make, let's say, a foundational um, base, foundational base of making sure that uh, Manifesta is very much focused on research, on knowledge production, um, activating knowledge which is already there and uh, in two, at the end of 2017 I invited one of the members of the now education mediation team called Joanna Monbaron who also worked for us in Palermo, Zurich and uh, Russia to go to Marseille to do the extensive research. So she worked already one year before anybody came in and then in 2018, March, I invited um, together with uh, a jury, Vinnie Maas MVADV, who had already previously worked in France to do an urban study, uh, together with the Y Factory, which is uh, part of the University of Delft and the University of Marseille, which is called the Marseille Moment. Uh, we won't show the film now because it's, uh, it's too long. It was actually, a study of uh, three months together with hundreds of students, which were presented in the, um, November 2018, actually in the same time as uh, the 5 November, the collapse of uh, Rue d'Aubagne, which is very close to uh, our office uh, in the um, Espace uh, Manifesta. And uh, Vinnie Maas presented the 1,200 pages of uh, urban study, which is called the Grand Puzzle, in an, for uh, an audience and the, um, the political scenarios of the 1st of February 2019. Um, what is very important is to contextualize that manifesto started when the old regime of the Republican Jean Goudin government was still there. And it was quite complicated that, um, you know, the critical role manifesta as a Trojan horse coming into the city is a critical part 
uh, manifesto always placed in each city was not always even um, so convenient for the um, for the former um, administration. And as everybody knows that in 2020 we had um, elections in the city of Marseille. And now we have the first female socialistic Green Mayor, Michel Ribeirola. So the Grand Puzzle, the Grand Puzzle, Grand Puzzle was um, presented in the spring of 2019. But Vin, Vinnie Maas and Marina Otero, who was member of the of the team I appointed, who is an architect and um, a curator at uh, the new institute in Rotterdam, when we uh, were faced with the collapse of the houses in uh, Rue de Vagne, Vinnie Maas immediately said, I don't want to do my um, architectural intervention for which he was invited. But then we said, let's try to find out how we can involve citizens, the citizens of Marseille, the associations, the political activists, inside discussing the impact and the outcome of the Grand Puzzle. And that became a new project, which is not so much known uh, within the world of contemporary art. And we were very much inspired by David van Rijbroek, a cultural philosopher from Belgium, who founded the G1000, which is a deliberative, deliberative democracy uh, tool instrument and which we turned into citizen assembly, 22 workshops, which were called Tous les Tours Les Possibles, and which were organized by um, local city activists called Moving Marseille, Utopia, Fabrique du Nord and Marseille Solution, Tariq Kesali and Joker Clinton. And what is maybe interesting, uh, due to COVID-19, um, 22 of these workshops were organized with more than 500 uh, Marseillais. Um, they wanted to do more workshops, but it was uh, too difficult to gather together. They did some of these workshops on a more digital context. And um, what is interesting, and that's what, of course, many people are asking, uh, some of the projects Vinnie Mass and uh, Tous les Tours Possible were envisioning for the future were stopped because these kind of actions could not continue because of COVID. Now there are discussions with the new government, with Jean-Marc um, Coppola and Michel Ribeirola, Sebastian Barle, how to involve in the next half year, the, let's say the outcome of the campus, le, the outcome of Tous les Tours les Possibles, and the outcome of the Citizen Assembly, maybe in organizing a permanent assembly and uh, maybe organizing some of or realizing some of the ideas. So it's a little bit of a, a, a larger context which um, in which uh, each manifesto now is taking place. What is also interesting, and before I ask my colleagues Beatriz Simonet and Primavera to, to give a kind of a more in-depth view on their part of the program, these three in one, three programs in one biennial, uh, is that also, of course, the COVID and the fact that many of us, there were 25 new commission projects, but there were 300 loans. Many of the artists could not uh, move to uh, Marseille. Uh, and also it, it forced us almost like to rethink uh, what could be, let's say, the intrinsic problematics of uh, Biennales. What manifesto is becoming 25 years next year? Should we also not critically reflect upon our own practices about a nomadic event, about the way we operate? And um, I can say that this morning we did a series of workshops uh, with the current manifesto host cities. And from next uh, onwards, we do workshops within our own team also to think about should a manifesto change its own practices and in which way uh, can this be done? But I would, I think it's very interesting in the short time we have also to invite uh, Primavera, who's a member of the uh, educational uh, mediation department and to reflect uh, maybe upon the part which is called Le Tiers Programme et Le Tiers uh, Puget. Would that be okay, Adeline? Yes, fine, yes, Primavera. So you, you can um, start your microphone if you're turned off and we'd be happy to hear um, about the tier program. Yep. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. So I'm part of the education and mediation team. So basically, basically, I'm gonna introduce you to our project. 
uh, maybe first I would like to talk a bit about the TIAR program, which is actually, uh, so basically mediation and edu education uh, department, and that is called TIAR program, which kind of uh, emphasizes the um, this kind of third gaze, this kind of third gaze that is kind of peripheral uh, from the institution so that you can have this like different angle, like a little bit on the side kind of gaze. And this is actually how we work in this, uh, in this TIAR program. Uh, the center, the heart of TIAR program is uh, how you um, how you implement, uh, not, not even implementing, but basically work like in contextualized practices. So basically, how do you work from what is already existing and not uh, importing new methodology, but really starting from what is there on the field, what is there on the city, what is there with the inhabitants. And um, that's basically how uh, the TIER program, but also the TIER QG and the project Invisible Archives uh, was born. As uh, Hedrick said, uh, Joanna Montbaron, who is uh, um, my colleague in the education and mediation uh, department, was there, was the first in Marseille, and all our program are based on this research. So maybe I was thinking to uh, sh like share with you, maybe not the PowerPoint in the end, but our Invisible Archives website, which is talking way better than me. <laughs> but I was wanting first to tell you that like one of the specificity of Marseille is this like, um, how would I describe that? This immense number of association. We have like more than, 20,000 association in Marseille, and this is a lot. And actually, the, having so much association has already sh actually shaped the history of Marseille and shaped the cultural and social um, life of Marseille. So basically, uh, invisible archives, which I'm going to try to do this and so share the screen. Yes, it's starting. Is it? Uh, yeah. Is it working? Yes, very well. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So, Invisible Archive is a actually kind of big project. It's the one of the biggest project of the education and mediation team, which is uh, a program of eight exhibitions, uh, who invited associations and artists to work together on the archives of the association and those, associ those associations are, are kind of in our opinion um, they participated into shaping part of the history of Marseille which is a non-institutional history and like often those are associations are not very well known or at least are not uh, advertised by the by the city or at least by the previous uh, city council um maybe i wanted to show you i'm gonna do something bold <laughs> which is trying to watch a video with you i don't know if it's gonna work mm -hmm. let's see right. let's try it <laughs> Let me know if you can hear the sound. Yes. Is it? Yeah, we can hear the sound, the music. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. It's a five minute teaser. Sorry, I'm trying to have the good quality so that you can read the subtitles, English subtitles. Ah, okay. It's not very because it wasn't that the video. Good. Yeah, we can see the subtitles in English. You cannot see the subtitles? Yes, we can. Oh, perfect. Okay. Okay. 
j'avais vraiment besoin de retrouver l'humain, la démarche, en fait, à la rencontre des habitants, à la rencontre des cultures, à tout ça. Première fois que j'ai vu sur les artisans visibles, c'était euh, bon, en fait, euh, manifesta, c'est pas ce que je pensais. Mais en fait, on a un artiste et une culture, après les concepts manifesta, les impalas qui ont pu euh, imposer son art, mais aussi de travailler avec euh, les acteurs locaux de la ville. I, I actually remember that day when we were in the office with Joanna and she was sharing like all the maps and the research uh, that, that we did. And we were just thinking like, we need to do something with all this information. Like, what do we do with it? How can we translate it and make it part of the biennial program of education and mediation program? Because it was a way of also learning and understanding like Il décrit son autre marseillais, qui est très important et qui a joué un rôle important dans le balisage des territoires péruviens de la ville de Marseille. La collaboration de Dino est une collaboration très difficile pour nous. Vous savez que vous pouvez obtenir peut-être que vous pouvez obtenir quelque chose, peut-être que vous pouvez obtenir quelque chose que quelqu'un ne sait pas sur eux-mêmes, mais que vous pouvez obtenir quelque chose et que vous pouvez obtenir quelque chose sur votre propre travail. Il y a la coopérative Hôtel du Nord, pour laquelle je suis passée. La coopérative Hôtel du Nord, très bien dit, à venir marcher. On avait l'association Médine, qui a aussi réparti ce culture de Marseille dans le Nord, sur la Suisse, mais pas le Médine, pas la place, c'est Deschamps. Est-ce que vous pouvez parler d'abonnés, c'est ça, c'est l'idée de l'association Ici, en ce moment, on a l'exposition autour des fondateurs d'un centre de pour tous, qui est une association qui a beaucoup fait pour le logement libre à Marseille. Alors, vous êtes arrivé avec ce, ce projet-là, les archives invisibles et la liste des associations qui sont absolument formidables. Je vais quand même, ça fait un peu, un peu promo, je vais l'éviter. Pour moi, c'était exactement la puissance de Marseille, euh, les associations que j'avais euh, invitées. C'est la puissance des Marseillais, c'est la puissance de ceux qu'on ignore justement, ou c'est la puissance des habitants, tout simplement de Marseille, qui, qui est aussi de l'espoir, c'est ce qu'on on va avoir une exposition avec euh, la Revive Family Little School, qui est un centre d'enregistrement à la salle Cette Cette nouvelle plus lourd regardé aussi comme la nouvelle plus lourd du bras de des gens qui n'ont pas été fidèles et qui ont pas joué ça quand j'ai déballé maintenant. Mais on me regarde toujours euh, comme un petit jeune parce que je parle de la race. Et je sais que c'est des gens qui m'ont toujours regardé, mais euh, on m'a montré que euh, c'est presque une vraie culture des gens. Derrière cette culture, il y a énormément de, de choses qu'on qu peut développer et qu'on a développées. L'association Mémoire de Sexualité, qui elle répertorie un peu l'histoire de la communauté LGBT, qui doit être une très petite affaire. Et j'ai toujours, comme euh, en arrière de ma tête, le sentiment d'avoir une communauté qui attend. C'est un tout petit projet de fond, hein, ça. mais il y a quand même une, une forme de responsabilité qui est assez comme donc une page de blanc, parce qu'il n'y a tellement rien. Il n'y a pas de lieu, on n'a pas d'institution, on n'a pas de lieu de résidence, de recherche, de création, pas de lieu d'expo, pas de lieu d'histoire, pas de lieu d'enseignement. Ça donne une, malheureusement une énorme responsabilité quand on nous ouvre à l'espace, parce qu'il faut que la porte, on mette notre pied, notre pied dedans et qu'on fasse rentrer les autres. Et enfin, la dernière expo sera avec le collectif La Fille qui nous flamme, qui a fondé le Polygon étoilé, qui est un cinéma de quartier à la ville. On connaît l'Ontario, en fait, parce qu'eux, ils ont construit Marseille et eux, ils construisent toujours Marseille. On connaît l'Ontario, quoi. Ça, je trouve que c'est un vachement important dans les artistes de l'Ontario. Euh, sur... ah. yep. I hope everybody was able to kind of watch it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry, the sound was not um, optimal, but um, we could uh, read the subtitles. And uh, so we got Yeah, that, I mean, we, we understood that uh, you worked a lot with uh, associations together, uh, based in Marseille, like this uh, rap uh, associations, for example. Um, yeah. Yep. So, yep, I mean, uh, you could also go to the website and watch it again if you want it in better quality. So I'm sorry if it wasn't that good. Uh, but yes, basically, it's a project that really uh, was like kind of 
working on collaboration, like how do you work with people and how do artists work with association and also inviting artists was like the idea of like uh, how do you also have this third gaze in this art practice and um, and also how do we actually learn about all those association practices that have been shaping Marseille history. So this is for the Invisible Archive. This Invisible Archive is actually presented in a space that is called Tiers QG. Maybe it is time to uh, go to the PowerPoint. Yay. Yay. Yes, coming. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see it. Maybe. Uh, how do you play uh, okay. Do you want to show us the Tier QG, the space huh? that is? Uh, yep, 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 yep. Program, yeah. I'm just, I'm just try, uh, trying to have the full, uh, full application. Don't, he I didn't hear you. Heard. You can click on the onglet diaporama. Okay, cool. Good. Uh, good. So this is uh, one window of the Tiers and basically Tiers is a space in a really central neighborhood of Marseille, which is also not that well known, or at least not that advertised by the city, by the city council, and also in the touristic uh, way of presenting Marseille, Bezance is very absent. Um, and we started there this space in 2019 <clears throat> with the help of uh, the neighborhood committee and some associations there. And the point was really that the TRQG is a space that, yes, also welcome the invisible archives, but also is a space where inhabitants can come and some projects can be built there. And uh, yeah, it's not only an art space, it's also a space for the neighbors, basically. And the project that want to like come there and maybe it's just chilling and having a cup of tea, but it could also be so much more. So yes, it was this kind of hybrid space that we wanted to build up. We had some success and some no, not that successful stuff, but yes, stuff happens there. And it was a big, uh, big project <laughs> for us, magician and education team. Uh, so yes, that was for Invisible Archive and TRQG, that you can still come and see the last exhibition that will be open next week with a neighbor cinema called uh, Polygon Etoile. So you will be welcome to come. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then we have this project called Group Think, which is a um, project where we invited this Danish artist, this Tine Marie Jacobsen, that arrived in uh, 2019, beginning of 2019, uh, right in the middle of uh, Yellow Vest, uh, ref reform of every high schools and so on. So a lot of uh, different protests happening in Marseille. And uh, when she arrived, knowing that she actually worked a lot with um, in space where in, how do you call that, war space, and she called herself peace builder. Uh, and when she arrived in this context of a protest, she decided to go to the schools and see what's happening there. And after interviewing uh, teachers and students, uh, the students were like, okay, you know, like this, like in this, days we don't have space to actually talk about what matters and she was like yes okay then let's work together on like building up this space and also building up a space where you could actually as a youngster uh, protest basically and then group think was born uh, which was a collaborative project with uh, eight school in Marseille and uh, 80 more than 80 students and uh, that it's basically a book where you have exercise that uh, could train teenagers, but not only teenagers, today we are doing that with adults too, uh, work about collective intelligence, but also strategies of protesting in a safe way. So basically you're in a crowd, it could be protest, it could be political, but it could be also something else. How do you take care of people around you? How, do you, how are you aware of the 
group aware of the bodies around you and this project actually shaped a lot of stuff in schools in because i mean maybe some of you knows how it works in uh, in education in france but well some stuff are really um how would you call that um not moving at all that they show so it totally uh reversed shaped the education meaning this program is also asking what's the place of the knowing person and the unknowing person like the place of the teacher and the place of the students please those kind of stuff so it was a project that actually yeah shaped a lot of stuff and is still ongoing because we are now working avec, uh, avec, <laughs> with other schools and also adults uh, not only in schools, but actually in uh, so much different other institutions. So this project is a lot about like, how do you disseminate this, this method and also how people take charge of this project and own this project. So this is like the second biggest project of um, education and mediation, or maybe it's, it's over, but yeah, maybe I just wanted to talk a little bit more, like really like one minute. And then we have yeah. like one other project, which is a summer school uh, about mediation with like Morocco and Tunisia and Algeria, where we actually talk about this contextualized practice in mediation. And then you will be able to also meet our mediators in the main program in Très Union, uh, with which you could have a like awesome discussion. That's it. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Primavera. Um, so I will pass on the word to uh, Beatrice Simonet, who is a coordinator for the Parallel du Sud uh, programs. Um, this is the parallel events. Huh? The, 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 these are more than 80 uh, events happening uh, in Marseille and in the surrounding, in the region, uh, region Sud. Uh, ah, we've got Alia coming back through her iPhone. <laughs> and yes, <laughs> I will. I will just stay in uh, silence, just in case if later on there are, um, there are questions. But I'm I'm here. But uh, just let me know if you need anything. I go back in silence. Merci. Okay, thank you. Merci, uh, Beatrice. I pass you on the word. So your microphone is off. Can you turn it on? <laughs> Excuse me. Hello, everybody. I'm Beatrice. So I'm the coordinator of the parallel program in Manifesta. I just want to specify that I'm part that the, in the local team. I'm not part in the international team. So I've been working uh, for Manifesta more than a half, uh, one year and a half now. So as, um, what can I say about this third program, um, Parallel du Sud? Um, as Edwig um, explained uh, sooner, uh, Manifesta Biennale in exploring uh, in each edition, a new territory in Europe tried, tried to, to, to create new exp uh, creative experience in dialogue with local scene, not only artistic scene, but also, also uh, social and urban scene. Um, so it's very important and uh, it has been very well explained by Alia uh, in Trade Union program and also by Prami. Primavera in the QG program. So I think that um, parallel program is a prolongation of those uh, two approaches, most curatorial and most educational. And um, how it works. Um, parallel program is, um, the, the main objective is first to highlight the local, regional, artistic scene of uh, the territory which base, is based Manifesta uh, and, to, and try to uh, also to create long lasting connection between those local scene and international professional curators and artistic producers. So specifically for Manifesta 13, what we can say that we had this uh, jury composed by international and local uh, members who were supposed to first choose 50 projects. But what we realized is that the local scene of Région Sud was so, I can say, uh, very rich in, uh, in um, a wide range of institutions and associations and a great diversity that we were not able to choose only 50 projects, but we chose at the end 96 project. Uh, just to uh, 
to, to be very parallel program uh, in a uh, contrary the main program is not only Marseille is region sud so maybe I have to explain that you know that in France you have this uh, public administration you have further level of the city after you have the level of the department and after you have the level of region Région Sud is uh, one of the most uh, large uh, region in France. It goes from Nice until Arles. So it's very, very uh, large region. So it was important to, um, to illustrate uh, this, this territory. So we chose 96 projects uh, on 300, more than 300 uh, applications from regional and also international stakeholders. And uh, the criteria was to choose project uh, uh, that make echo to the curatorial program Trade Union. And we didn't have so many problems to choose the project because as the Biennale started one month ago, I can now realize that it's very, very uh, interesting to see that all the parallel projects are very uh, linked with the main uh, topics of Trade Union. It mostly try to also analyze the specific and the broad roots of this city of Marseille. And it's very, very interesting. And it's a pity that <laughs> Biennale is no uh, st stop in, at the end of November, because I think that it will very create a sort of collaboration between uh, stake regional stakeholders and also artists that are from Trade Union. And you can also remark that there are artists in Trade Union, but also part of parallel program. So it's quite interesting. Uh, regarding the French scene, we can, we can say that um, uh, there is a uh, parallel program, a focus on emerging uh, scene in Marseille. Oh. Sorry. No, no, nothing. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, emerging uh, see, seen in Marseille, a strange connection with uh, Ecole des Beaux-Arts uh, de Marseille, and also a lot of uh, new artists run space in Marseille, like CC Club, Belzance Project, Voiture 14, and also uh, more than 200 artists based in Région Sud are a part of the parallel program. So yes, I think that you will uh, meet some of them that quite that are now quite established at the national level, like Wilfred Almandra, Nicola Flock, but also um, a lot of uh, curatorial platform, uh, regional, and also in link linked with European platforms. So what can I say else? I don't know. It's a great diversity of project, not only contemporary art, but a lot also um, project uh, that take uh, um, performance, also design, also uh, architecture, also non-professional artists are based, are in, uh, involved in parallel program. Uh, so it's very uh, sort of great diversity and a prolongation of this thematic of trade union. Mm -hmm. And Beatrice, did you want to show some pictures from the uh, manifesta uh, uh, PowerPoint, or is that fine to you? Or... I have, uh, you have it. I mean, we we have it too. Okay. So we can share if you want. But if, if you don't need to, that's fine. Oh, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned already, so there were there are this um, exhibitions, so we will be able to listen more to the artists. Uh, for example, Nicola Flock, uh, who is exhibiting at Frac uh, Paca uh, in Marseille. So we will uh, be able to listen to him on, on our talk series. But we also have um, invited uh, Wilfried Almandra uh, tomorrow morning at 9:30 talking to a uh, curator uh, Cédric Fock from Palais de Tokyo and um, another solo show uh, shown in Marseille uh, during uh, this Parallel du Sud is uh, um, uh, Abraham Pointcheval who has been showing at uh, Vieille Charité at the moment and we will be also having a talk with him. Um, yeah, 
So, I mean, thank you very much, um, Beatrice. Um, I don't know, I mean, we, we still have a bit of time for um, uh, questions. So if you want to ask questions, um, you can raise your hand um, and then I can give you the word or you can also ask the questions uh, in the chat. Um, so Alia is still here too, so, um, so she's back, so here, so if you have also questions to Alia, uh, Primavera is still here, uh, Edvik uh, Fijin had to leave, um, and but maybe I have one, um, um, one question uh, to start um, to Alia. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you, yeah. Thank you, yeah. So I was just wondering, um, so you presented the six chapters mm -hmm. that uh, were opening in different steps, I mean, step by step. Uh, I mean, uh, it started on the 28th of August and uh, it opened, um, I think, in four steps, as far as I... Uh, in six steps, actually, and one, steps. yeah, yeah, yeah. for each other um, until the, 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 the middle of um, October. And is it, um, was it part of the original concept or was it something you had to adapt because of the COVID situation or? It was, uh, actually, we wanted to have this, um, yeah, to, to, to address it in several plots or actually how we thought about it is different scenario. Uh, so it has always been thought as uh, different moments, different chapters. But of course, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the pandemic, uh, we, uh, like it also like created uh, even more the urgency uh, to, uh, to find ways to like we could not, like the whole model didn't make, uh, the whole model of opening, uh, yeah, three days opening and all of that didn't make sense anymore. So that also it helped us to kind of, um, yeah, like it, it supported this idea of opening one chapter after the other one. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was the impact in general uh, of uh, the pandemic to manifesta? I mean, Primavera and Beatrice, do you have, uh, few examples how how it affected you um, in the events you organized and uh... Uh, part of the parallel events uh, mostly 80 percent of the participants of the parallel events uh, were waiting for the decision of manifesta to consult to report and most of them adapted their project in the frame of the report of manifesta but uh, from 96 project now, currently there is a 85 ongoing project. So uh, there were one or two consolation, but not so, not so much. Most of the regional partner, uh, we adapted that project in the frame of Manifesta from the 28th of November uh, of August until uh, the end of November. It was very important for us to start um, at the end, the Biennale at the end of August to be also in solidarity with the regional scene. You know, because of the constellation of Artorama and Rentre de l'Art Contemporain. So that's why also we decided to open gradually from uh, the end of August until uh, the 9th of October. Mm -hmm. And most of the parallel project follows these gradual openings. All right. So we have, thank you. We have one question from Maria Hlavajova. Uh, I give you the word, Maria, if you can hear me. If you want thank to. You. Ask yeah, I, I could not locate the uh, raised hand uh, amongst the tool. I'll uh, do my homework. I just wanted to ask to Primavera prim primarily. It's extremely rich array of events and projects. And I wonder whether. They would happen without manifesta in other words was this triggered or only made possible by manifesta and on the other hand what will stay over locally and um, i will not go too much in depth but indeed i curated uh, co-curated manifesta three 20 years ago in ljubljana and i recall the drama it left in the city because it's to a great extent suffocated the the local potential 
rather than leaving things around. This is how I experienced it. Because there was this huge international UFO landing on very fragile scene. So I'm curious, this two part question, would this come to life without manifesta? And what will stay of it as a kind of sustained infrastructure once the Manifesto 13 moves to another part of, the, of, uh, of Europe, essentially? Thank you. Uh, so your question is about the TIER program itself, the project of TIER program. Oh, okay. Uh, then first question, I, in my opinion, I don't think like, for example, invisible archive would have happened without Manifesta because basically having money from the city and like from outside coming, coming into this kind of project is, would have been very rare. And uh, especially in the context, uh, political context of before the, the old uh, city council. So I think without Manifesta, Invisible Archive wouldn't have happened. Um, and also because this thing of, um, how would I say that? institutionalize this kind of stuff, this association work and like bring together like this in an institutional way is, would have been very impossible because like th those are two words like, like that were very separate. So it would have been super hard in my opinion, at least maybe I'm wrong, but well, in my experience as a local person of the association scene, it would have been maybe impossible. Uh, then uh, for the legacy, let's say so, uh, Invisible Archives is for now working on the, how could it, could it go further? But the most interesting thing is that after every exhibition and work together with the association on an artist, the association all actually started this archiving um, process. And they all started to think what does it mean to archive their own uh, association life and their own association history in the context of the city history. And basically you have all the participants that are now thinking about like keeping going this archiving, but also thinking like how do they share it to other cities and how do they maybe institutionalize it or not. How, like, for example, the Mémoire de Sexualité, which is uh, the LGBTQ plus uh, association we're working with, are uh, now in a, like, thinking about how maybe this could become um, a LGBTQ plus center, basically. Like before it was, it was an apartment with archive that was kind of uh, opening every week for one, two hours. And now they're really thinking of becoming a, a center, a LGBTQ plus center. So this is kind of this kind of uh, process and um, energy that actually come from came from that. Also, the TRQG space is now kind of being discussed of being uh, um, owned, let, rented by a citizen that is maybe planning of having a cultural space, which is huge, super super cool in the neighborhood of Belzance. So another legacy. But I would also say that groupthink right now is in the process. Uh, where we really hope that in some years, every school, uh, I mean, this is my dream, but it's kind of, we are in this process where some school in Marseille are going to own group thing project as a daily year kind of project. So I would say for now, yeah, this is the legacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, we have one more question uh, from Thailand, uh, from Ong uh, Zhang Suwat. Uh, maybe you can you can um, um, turn on your microphone, uh, Ong, and ask the question directly. Uh, I think it's a question to Alia. Uh, hi, is is my voice okay? Yes, it's fine. All right. Great. Uh, sorry, I have my video off. I'm commuting as well. But um, yeah, I think my question is to Alia, and and it's, uh, you know, I, uh, Thailand only just recently start to have biennales, uh, and it's kind of clashing right now between like the Bangkok Biennale and the sort of uh, Thailand government run biennales. But um, my my question is about how curators from uh, European biennales and even international biennales, how do they discover artists, especially from Southeast Asian region? Because I think it's important for, for 
uh, artists in this region to be more represented outside. But I think maybe we still don't understand how we can connect with curators from other parts of the world yet. So I just want to know just the typical sort of process or maybe in specifically in, in um, Manifesta case. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. I have to be honest, it's a very difficult question. So I'll try to be like as uh, honest. And I think it's a question open to everyone in the um, in all the participants. Uh, I, I have to say, I don't find that there is, uh, I don't know any good system. Um, so what has been happening so far, uh, uh, you have like a research trip uh but I'm, i mean like it's not only for this manifest uh, for this biennial I, i'll be giving example for several biennials you do the most of the time is by doing research trip and uh, with research trip is thanks to uh, an organism who are who organizes the the research trip and then of course it means that um they put you in contact only with their network uh so and most of the time, the whole idea of the research trip, which is still now being challenged with the, with the, with the pandemic, uh, it's still like a very, very short amount of time. So I, I think like we still haven't found the way to have like uh, a more extensive knowledge uh, about like uh, a local art scene. Uh, it can be, I can give you the same example and I share the same questions, for instance, when I'm talking about like the local art scene in, in Morocco, where I'm coming from. And um, it's with art, artist research, uh, with research trip, uh, it's asking someone who is active in that uh, ter territory to give um, advices, recommendations, suggestions. Again, it only means that this person will give you access to like uh, his or her network so again it's like not a, an extensive uh, knowledge about about the space so so far i think you're still like dependent on the organization who are who organized the research trip the people you would be asking uh voila but i i i launched this question to everyone uh if you know like a better uh system of connecting and um and it's working also with artists who can, who would recommend other artists uh, who are working in a similar area. And uh, yeah, but it's always dependent of like the the the, the first uh, uh, person or institution you would approach. Um, and uh, then of course you have like uh, yeah les 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 centres culturels, les ambassades. Uh, but again, it's like uh, you you. You can't have access to like an extensive, um, yeah, approach of of, uh, of a specific regional scene. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alia. And maybe the last question would be, I mean, to follow what Maria asked to Primavera would be what uh, for you? I mean, uh, what do you wish uh, that will will stay over from Manifesta 13 as a curator? What do you wish uh, will stay? For me, um, I hope what we try to do is uh, exactly not to arrive as an UFO. Uh, and uh, even though like it's not a Marseille-based uh, initiative, even though we're not Marseille-based curators, um, I think it's very clear with the, with the work of the Le Tiercuget, uh, Les Parallèles du Sud, um, that, like, and also what we have been trying to do is not to uh, invent la poudre or reinvent la poudre and to say, hey, we come and we create spaces to work together. It was more like uh, highlighting, uh, bringing together uh, initiative who are already doing that and uh, association who are already doing that. Um, and sometimes what happened in this uh, last few years, it's true that uh, some, Association, some cultural institution were not working yet closely with each other. And that happened uh, during the moment of Manifesta. There were like a series of workshops that have been launched uh, during the moment of Manifesta because like there were some spaces when we were working together. And I just hope that at least these conversations 
that started during or continued, but more like strengthened during the moment of Manifesta can continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Alia. And thank you, thank you very much to all of you, to Primavera, to Beatrice, to Edvig, who has gone already. And um, so we are carry on these talks uh, tomorrow at 9.30 uh, with a conversation between Wilfried Almondra and uh, Cédric Fock, uh, curator. So thank you so much to all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you.